Railroad electrification in the United States began at the turn of the 20th century and comprised many different systems in many different geographical areas, few of which were connected. Despite this situation, these systems shared a small number of common reasons for electrification. Most of the systems discussed in this article are either no longer electrified, or are now part of the Northeast Corridor and Keystone Corridor systems used by Amtrak and several commuter rail lines. One exception is the Black Mesa and Lake Powell Railroad, an isolated system hauling coal from a mine to a power plant. Most mass transit, streetcar and interurban systems electrified very early—many from the beginning—but are not within the scope of this article. <laughs> Impetus for electrification The common reasons for electrification in the United States include Topic. Laws banning steam locomotives smoke abatement. A number of municipalities passed laws in the early part of the 20th century forbidding steam locomotives from operating within city limits, after some bad accidents caused by the awful conditions of visibility in smoke and steam-filled tunnels and cuttings. The most prominent of these laws was for New York City in 1903 effective 1908. .An extensive study was also undertaken in Chicago of the problems of smoke and the feasibility of electrification as a solution. <laughs> Long tunnels Long, deep tunnels provide poor ventilation for steam locomotives, to the point where crews had to wear oxygen masks to avoid asphyxiation. The ventilation problem also limited the frequency of trains through these tunnels. The Cascade Tunnel is a good example. Also see the proposed North-South Rail Link. Mountains The electric locomotive has many advantages in mountainous terrain, including better adhesion, greater power at low speeds, no requirements for fueling or watering, and regenerative braking. The planned California high-speed rail system, for example requires electrification to achieve acceptable speeds through the Tehachapi Mountains. Traffic density Extremely high traffic lines can readily recoup the high capital investment of electrification by the savings accrued during operation. The savings typically result from improved utilization of trains, and lower maintenance costs. Short distance commuter operations Suburban commuter trains are an ideal subject for electrification since electric multiple units possess rapid acceleration, fast braking, sometimes regenerative braking, and the ability to change direction without running a locomotive around. It also reduces diesel locomotive emissions in relatively high density areas. Freight operations Heavy freight trains are ideally suited to electric traction due to the greater pulling power of an electric locomotive. Overview of electrification in the U.S. 
Electrification in the U.S. reached its maximum of 3,100 miles 5, kilometers in the late 1930s, by 1973 it was down to 1,778 route miles 2, kilometers class 1 railroads with the top three being, Penn Central 829 miles 1, kilometers, Milwaukee Road 658 miles 1059 kilometers Long Island Railroad 121 miles 195 kilometers in 2014 the only electrified lines hauling freight by electricity were three short-line coal haulers mine to power plant and one switching railroad in Iowa the total electrified route length of these four railroads is 122 miles 196 kilometers. While some freight trains run on parts of the electrified Northeast Corridor and on part of the adjacent Keystone Corridor, these freight trains use diesel locomotives for traction. The total electrified route length of these two corridors is 559 miles 900 kilometers. Topic: History of electrification projects in the United States. Topic: <laughs> Smoke abatement. Topic: <laughs> 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 Cleveland Union Terminals Co. In June 1929 this railroad switched from steam to electric operation on a 17-mile route between Collinwood and Lindale in Ohio. A 3,000 volts DC overhead system was used. This change of operation was for smoke abatement. Electric operation ceased in 1953. Topic: New York Central Railroad, Hudson and Harlem divisions. The New York Central electrified a section of its main line Hudson Division route in 1913 from New York City, Grand Central Terminal, to Harmon, now Croton Harmon, where it changed to at first steam, then diesel power. The Harlem Division in Westchester County, New York was also electrified to North White Plains. Metro North Railroad, the successor to New York Central's commuter operations, continues to use these lines, and extended the Harlem Line electrification to southeast in 1984. The lines are electrified at 750 volts DC with underrunning third rail. The Hudson Line is used by Amtrak for intercity passenger service to and via Albany, but these trains run to Penn Station via the Empire Connector, and only in the underground area in and near that station do Amtrak's dual-mode diesel and electric locomotives shift to using the overrunning DC third rail. Tunnels. Baltimore and Ohio Railroad The construction of the Howard Street Tunnel through Baltimore in order to make a rail connection to New York City brought about the world's first mainline electrification. Operation began in 1895 with three General Electric locomotives. These locomotives only worked pulling northbound trains, southbound traffic simply coasted through this section, which was all downhill. Initially the system used a unique overhead track in which the current shoe rode, but shortly after it was converted to a conventional 675 volts DC third rail system. The electrification was discontinued in 1952 when dieselization made it unnecessary.
Topic Boston and Main Railroad Hoosick Tunnel The Hoosick Tunnel was electrified by the Boston and Main Railroad in May 1911. This was done to speed up trains and to reduce smoke in the tunnel. Electricity was provided from the Xylonite power plant in Adams, MA. The electrification was switched off in August 1946 with the arrival of diesel locomotives on the route. Topic: <laughs> Grand Trunk Railway Street, Clare Tunnel. The St. Clair Tunnel is the name for two separate rail tunnels which were built under the St. Clair River between Sarnia, Ontario and Port Huron, Michigan. It was the first full-size i.e. able to allow a railroad to run through it subaqueous tunnel built in North America. Steam locomotives were used in the early years to pull trains through the tunnel, however concerns about the potential dangers of suffocation should a train stall in the tunnel led to the installation of catenary wires for electric-powered locomotives by 1907. The first use of electric locomotives through the tunnel in regular service occurred on May 17, 1908. The electric-powered locomotives were retired in 1958 and scrapped in 1959 after CNR retired and scrapped its last steam-powered locomotives on trains passing through the tunnel. New diesel-powered locomotives did not cause the same problems with air quality in this relatively short tunnel. Great Northern Railway Cascade Tunnel The Great Northern Railway now BNSF Railway electrified the 2.5 mile 4.0 kilometers original Cascade Tunnel in 1909 near the summit of Stevens Pass in the Cascade Mountains this first electrification system with GE-built box scabs were the only three-phase AC power ever used on North America railroads, see three-phase AC railway electrification. The electric box scabs pulled trains through the tunnel with their steam locomotives still attached until they were retired in 1927. In 1925 work began on the new 7.8-mile Cascade Tunnel, with the Great Northern ultimately electrifying a 73-mile section of its main line route to Seattle, Washington from Wenatchee to Skykomish. The new tunnel and electrification reduced the main line by 9 miles, 14 kilometers, eliminated 502 feet, 153 meters of elevation and 6 miles, 9.7 kilometers of snow sheds. Electric locomotives handled mainline freight and passenger trains on this section exclusively. The route was de energized and catenary dismantled in 1956, after the Cascade Tunnel was fitted with ventilation fans. <laughs> Michigan Central Railroad Detroit Tunnel Lines The Michigan Central Railroad electrified the tunnels under the Detroit River in 1910. The system used a 600 volts DC under running third rail. The electrification covered a total of 4.5 miles (7.2 kilometers) between two passenger stations in Detroit and Windsor. The total track mileage covered around 28.5 miles (45.9 kilometers), which included not only the station and tunnel lines but also an extensive yard. The electrification was discontinued in the early 1950s when the tunnel was ventilated so that diesels could run through. Topic Hudson and Manhattan Railroad Hudson River Tubes The Hudson and Manhattan Railroad, a rapid transit system, was built between New York, Hoboken and Jersey City, opening in 1908. 
The system operates through two tunnels beneath the Hudson River, the Uptown Hudson Tubes that go from New Jersey to Greenwich Village, and the Downtown Hudson Tubes that go to the World Trade Center. It was designed as an electrified system using 600 volts DC third rail. The system was taken over by Port Authority Trans Hudson in 1962, and still operates today. Mountainous terrain Topic Butte, Anaconda and Pacific Railway The BA&P, a copper ore hauling short line in Montana, electrified in 1913 using a 2,400 volts DC system engineered by General Electric. It was the first primarily freight railroad in North America to electrify. Original motive power was in the form of 28 identical BB boxcabs, which served until de electrification in 1967, by which time diesel electric locomotives were cheaper to run. GE used the BA&P as a model railroad for demonstrating the success of its DC electrification techniques. The Milwaukee Road electrified soon afterward using a similar technique at 3000 volts DC. Topic Chicago, Milwaukee and St. Paul Railroad. The Milwaukee Road, the Chicago, Milwaukee and St. Paul Railroad, Pacific was not added to the title until incorporation in 1927. Electrified two of its mountainous divisions using a DC overhead system. The two divisions were widely separated from each other, but plans to electrify the intervening 212 miles 341 kilometers, the relatively flat Idaho division from Avery to Othello, were never implemented. The electrification system was similar to that of the Butte, Anaconda and Pacific, but was at 3000 volts DC rather than 2400 volts DC. The higher voltage was chosen because of the load conditions with 2,500 ton trains. Topic: <laughs> Rocky Mountain Division, Harlowtown to Avery. The first division to be electrified was the Rocky Mountain Division from Harlowtown, Montana to Avery, Idaho. This covered a distance of 438 miles (705 kilometers) and began electric operation in 1917. The electrification remained in operation until 1974, when diesel locomotives took over. There were two main reasons for electrifying this division. The first was to get through the Bitter Root Mountains, which are steeply graded. The second was that the line passes through an important forest reserve of the U.S. government. Steam trains were a fire hazard, and thus electric trains lessened the risk. Coast Division Othello to Tacoma, Seattle. The second division to be electrified was the Coast Division between Othello, Washington to Tacoma, and to Black River just south of Seattle. This covered a distance of 207 miles kilometers and began electric operation in 1919. The electrification remained in operation until 1972, when diesel locomotives took over. The main reason for electrifying was to get over the Saddle Mountains. Topic Norfolk and Western Railway The Norfolk and Western Railway N &W had an electrified district of 52 miles 84 kilometers from Bluefield to Yeager, West Virginia, between 1913 and 1950. It was an 11 kV, 25 Hz overhead electrification in a mountain region with a major tunnel Elkhorn Tunnel.
Topic Virginian Railway The VGN had an electrified district of 134 miles 216 kilometers of mountainous terrain built in the 1920s from Roanoke, Virginia to Mullins, West Virginia. It went to the N&W with the 1959 merger and was de-electrified in 1962. Topic: Traffic density. Topic: <laughs> Amtrak. Amtrak, the National Intercity Passenger Railroad, inherited a 1930s-era 11 kV 25 Hz electrification system from the Pennsylvania Railroad PRR, which it is slowly modernizing, and has completed two electrification projects on its own lines. A short portion of the Empire Connection was electrified when it was built in 1991, allowing trains from Albany direct access to Penn Station New York by use of dual-mode locomotives. Track near the terminal was electrified with 750 volts DC third rail, compatible with the third rail system used within Penn Station by the Long Island Railroad the Northeast Corridor mainline from New Haven to Boston was electrified in 1999, completing the thwarted ambition of the former New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad. This electrification was part of the Acela Express high-speed project, and involved the building of overhead lines electrified at 25 kV 60 Hz, requiring trains to handle a change of voltage on the fly at New Haven. Plans to convert the rest of the Northeast Corridor to 60 Hz have been shelved, although the section from New Haven to the Hell Gate Bridge has been converted to 60 Hz by Metro North. <laughs> Boston, Revere Beach and Lynn Railroad This railroad changed from steam to electric operation in 1928 using a 600 volts DC overhead system. The company filed for bankruptcy in 1937, and ceased operating in 1940. In 1952 a section of the line between East Boston and Revere was bought by the MBTA and is now a part of the Blue Line. The remainder of the line to Lynn is owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and may be used for further expansion of the Blue Line. <inaudible> Erie Railroad Rochester Division. In June 1907, the Erie Railroad changed from steam to electric operation on its Rochester Division. A single phase AC system was used operating at 11 kV 25 Hz. The electrified section was between Rochester, New York to Mount Morris, NY, a distance of 34 miles. 55 km. The system lasted in operation until 1934. New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad The New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad completed electrification in 1907 of its New Haven New York City mainline and was one of the pioneers of heavy electric railway use in the United States. The New Haven chose the 11 kV 25 Hz system, later used by the PRR, in addition to working with Westinghouse to develop AC-DC electric motors locomotives to run on both AC overhead lines and DC third rail. The main line, now Metro North Railroad's New Haven line, was converted to 12.5 kV 60 Hz in 1985. Pennsylvania Railroad The Pennsylvania Railroad carried out many electrification projects
Topic West Jersey and Seashore Railroad The PRR, owner of West Jersey and Seashore Railroad WJ and S, electrified with 600 volts DC from Camden, New Jersey to Atlantic City, via Newfield, and to Millville. A third rail system was used for most of the line except overhead trolley wire was installed between Mickle Street in Camden and Gloucester City as well as a 10-mile segment between Newfield and Millville. The Camden-Gloucester City portion was installed due to a decision to use the old Camden 7th Street line as part of the route. Numerous grade crossings on both this segment and in Gloucester City precluded the use of third rail due to public safety considerations. The Millville branch, however, was equipped with overhead wire as a method of comparing the durability of trolley wire versus third rail under high speed open country operating conditions. The WJ and S ordered 62 coaches and six combination baggage mail units split between Jackson and Sharp Company, and J.G. Brill and Company at Philadelphia, which had 46 cars from the order. Brill sublet work on 22 coaches to its Wasson subsidiary in Springfield, Massachusetts. The electrification was opened in 1906 with cars that resembled wooden interurbans of other electric traction properties. The same year the 1906 Atlantic City train wreck occurred, in which a three-car train of the new equipment derailed and fell into a waterway, 53 people died. Other cars were built in 1909 bringing the fleet total to 80 MP1 and MP2 class wooden MU coaches. The 19 purchased in 1909 had steel instead of wooden ends and featured PRR porthole style windows on each end. There were six MO1 class passenger baggage combines including two with steel ends, four MBM1 baggage mail cars and two MB1 baggage express cars. In 1912, the PRR assigned two MPB54 all-steel combines and 15 all-steel MP54 coaches to WJ and S. WJ and S and the Reading subsidiary Atlantic City Railroad were merged into Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Lines (PRSL) in 1932. Electric MU service between Newfield and Atlantic City ended September 26, 1931, so PRSL only inherited the electrified Millville commuter rail service from WJ and S. On October 20, 1948, New Jersey's public utility regulators ordered PRSL to remove all remaining 26 wooden MU coaches from service as a safety hazard should they be involved in fire or collision. PRSL management already was considering replacing the MUs due to an aging power distribution system and obsolete rolling stock. So nearly two-thirds of the MU fleet was removed from service. With only the PRR-style all-steel MUs left for passenger service, PRSL cut back the electrified commuter service to Glassboro in fall 1948 and management then ordered an end to all remaining electrification as of September 8, 1949. On that date a morning commuter run from Glassboro to Camden ended 43 years of electrification. Non-electrified commuter rail service to Glassboro and Millville continued until March 5, 1971. <laughs> New York Terminal Electrification was installed from Sunnyside Yard in Queens, through New York Station to Manhattan Transfer Station in New Jersey. A 675 volts DC third rail top contact system was used. Electrification was later changed to 11 kV 25 Hz overhead catenary, when the PRR electrified its mainline to Washington, D.C. in the early 1930s. 
Third rail is still installed in the East River tunnels in order to provide power the LIRR trains. Third rail is also installed in the North River tunnels for use in emergencies should power be lost to the overhead catenary. Powley A section of the Chicago-Philadelphia Main Line now part of Amtrak's Keystone Corridor was electrified in 1915. The suburban service between the former Broad Street Station in Philadelphia and the village of Powley the PRR electrification utilized overhead catenary wires electrified at 11 kV 25 Hz, and was fed by two substations, one in Philadelphia and another in Ardmore. It was expanded in 1919 on the PRR's Chestnut Hill Line, and in the 1920s on the Philadelphia-Washington D.C. Main Line between Philadelphia and Wilmington, and on the Westchester Line between Philadelphia and Westchester, with the latter two lines being fed through a single substation located in Chester. New York, Washington Extensive electrification after 1925 occurred on the PRR's New York-Washington Line now part of the Northeast Corridor, the Chicago-Philadelphia Main Line between Powley and Harrisburg, several major commuter lines in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and on major low grade, through freight lines, including the Trenton Cutoff, the Atglin and Susquehanna, Port Road, Philadelphia and Thorndale, Shellpot, and Enola branches. All electrification done after 1919 used the same catenary supports used on the Powley commuter line, but with the catenary being supplied with 100 kV 25 Hz transmission lines with the voltage stepped down at substations located every 10 to 20 miles 16 to 32 km. The PPL-owned Safe Harbor Dam, located near the Exelon-owned Peach Bottom nuclear power plant between Conowingo, Maryland and York, Pennsylvania, supplies the power for all post-1925 electrical expansion projects, while Exelon supplies the pre-1925 electrification areas through the existing Philadelphia, Ardmore, and Chester substations. Plans were made in the 30s to extend electrification to Pittsburgh, but were not pursued due to the Great Depression. Since its takeover by Amtrak in 1976, both the Northeast and Keystone corridors are undergoing extensive wire replacements, either by Amtrak or SEPTA, while the through freight branches taken over by Conrail have been de electrified and freight operations carried out by diesel locomotives. Those lines that were de-electrified, but have transmission lines are maintained by Amtrak through arrangements through Conrail's successors, Norfolk Southern and CSX Transportation. Topic Rock Island and Southern Railway This railroad electrified 52 miles 84 kilometers between Rock Island and Monmouth, Illinois using a 11 kV 25 HZ system. Topic Spokane and Inland Empire Railroad In 1906, this railroad electrified from Spokane to Colfax, Washington and Moscow, Idaho using a 6,600 volts 25 hertz system. Topic. Suburban commuter operations Topic Delaware, Lackawanna and Western Railroad, Morris and Essex Railroad What are now New Jersey Transit's Morris and Essex Lines the Morristown Line and Gladstone Branch and Montclair Boonton Line were electrified by the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western Railroad at 3000 volts DC in 1930-31. By August 1984 the lines had all been converted to 25 kV 60 Hz by NJ Transit. Denver RTD 
In 2015 a new commuter railroad commenced operation in Denver, Colorado. The new line between Denver Union Station and Denver International Airport operates at 25 kV 60 Hz. <inaudible> Reading Railroad Electrification on the Reading Railroad began during the late 1920s. The first stage was placed in operation on July 26, 1931, when electric suburban trains began serving the Bethlehem branch between Reading Terminal, Philadelphia and Lansdale, the Doylestown branch between Lansdale and Doylestown, the New Hope branch between Glenside and Hatboro, and the Jersey City branch between Jenkintown and West Trenton, New Jersey. The second stage, the Norristown and Chestnut Hill branches, was opened on February 5, 1933. Like the PRR Powley commuter line, the Reading employed overhead catenary wire powered at 11 kV 25 Hz, but unlike the PRR, the Reading used a single generator, located at Wayne Junction, with long distance lines being supplied by spider frame pylons that can still be seen, mostly along the Schuylkill Expressway. I Extensions of electrification over intercity lines, such as West Trenton Jersey City, Norristown Reading Harrisburg, and Lansdale Bethlehem were planned, but because of the Great Depression, they were dropped. Only two expansion projects, carried out by the Reading with funding from SEPTA, were that of the Newtown branch between Newtown Junction and Fox Chase in September 1966, and the Warminster branch between Hatboro and Warminster in 1974. Since the takeover of the Reading commuter lines in 1983, SEPTA has rehabilitated the catenary wires between the Center City commuter connection and Wayne Junction and on all X-Reading tracks owned by SEPTA. Those sections of X-Reading tracks owned by Conrail, and later by CSX, are being done on a step-by-step -step basis. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois Central Railroad The Illinois Central Railroad electrified its three commuter lines serving Chicago in 1926 pursuant to ordinances passed by the city. The IC commuter lines remain electrified and are now operated as Metra Electric. The catenary is energized at 1,500 volts DC and serves four tracks of commuter operations. Two tracks are unelectrified and used for freight and Amtrak service to downstate Illinois and beyond. <laughs> Long Island Railroad The Long Island Railroad's electrification was initiated in the first decade of the 20th century while it was owned by the Pennsylvania Railroad, which was building tunnels under the Hudson River and East River to gain access to Manhattan. The first segment of the LIRR to be electrified was the trackage between the Atlantic Avenue Terminal in Brooklyn and Jamaica Station. Electrification extended east of Jamaica to the Belmont Park Station in 1905. In 1910, the opening of Pennsylvania Station New York City ushered in electric service between that station and Jamaica. The LIRR's Port Washington branch was rebuilt and electrified by 1918. By 1934, LIRR branches to Mineola, Hempstead, West Hempstead, Far Rockaway, Long Beach, and Babylon were electrified. In 1970, electrification was extended to Hicksville, and to Huntington on the Port Jefferson branch. In 1987, electrification of the main line between Hicksville and Rinconcoma was completed, resulting in greatly increased service. The LIRR utilizes third rail electrification, which was the original method used by the PRR. 
By the 1930s, the PRR had switched to overhead catenary electrification, but the LIRR has continued utilizing its third rail system. Voltage was increased from 600 volts DC to 750 volts DC in the early 1970s to meet the greater power needs of the railroad's new M1 cars. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> New York, Westchester and Boston Railway. This railroad converted the operation of its suburban train service from steam to electric. The four-track main line ran for 7 miles 11 kilometers from Westchester Avenue in New York to Mount Vernon, New York. From Mount Vernon the line split into two two-track lines, one to New Rochelle, New York 2 miles 3.2 kilometers and a second to White Plains, NY 9.4 miles 15.1 kilometers. <laughs> Caltrain The Caltrain Modernization Program is a $1.9 billion project that will electrify the railroad's main line, which serves cities in the San Francisco Peninsula and Silicon Valley. Caltrain service has existed in its current form since operated as the Peninsula Commute by Southern Pacific, but proposals for electrifying the line began as early as 1992. The project lay dormant due to lack of funding until Caltrain agreed to share its tracks with the California High Speed Rail Authority. CalMod will electrify 51 miles 82 kilometers of tracks between 4th and King Station and Tamian Station and plans to be completed the project by 2021. New electrical infrastructure includes installation of approximately 130 to 140 miles, 210 to 230 kilometers of 25 kV 60 Hz single phase AC overhead contact lines and 10 new power stations, two traction power stations, a switching station approximately halfway along the line and seven paralleling stations. Freight operations Texas Transportation Company Main article, Texas Transportation Company the Texas Transportation Company operated a small Class III railroad in San Antonio until 2001, mostly serving the Pearl Brewery. It had a connection to the Southern Pacific Railroad, and briefly hosted passenger service in the 1980s with a former San Antonio trolley. Black Mesa and Lake Powell Railroad The BM and LP is an isolated short line in Arizona which hauls coal from a mine near Cayenta to the Navajo Generating Station power plant at Page. When built in 1973, it was the first line to use 50 kV 60 Hz overhead catenary. The coal it hauls on the 78 miles 126 kilometers is used by the power plant at its western terminus to power the line itself. The line does not connect to any other part of the American freight rail network. <laughs> Niagara Junction Railway This was electrified in 1913 in order to improve the efficiency of freight switching operations at an industrial plant. A 660 volts DC overhead system was used. In 1948 the company was bought by the New York Central, Erie and the Lehigh Valley. In 1976 it became a part of Conrail. Electric operation ended in 1979. Muskingum Electric Railroad 
This line operated between a coal mine and power generation station in southeast Ohio. It was electrified its entire life from its construction in 1968 to its dismantling around 2004. The line utilized 50,000 volt AC catenary to power GEE 40C locomotives. Topic Mason City and Clear Lake Traction Co. This is a 10 mile line in Iowa that was built to connect Mason City with Clear Lake. Initially it operated a passenger service using a 600 volts overhead system. In 1961 it was sold to investors and renamed as Iowa Terminal. In 1987 the line was purchased once more and was renamed to Iowa Traction Railway where it now operates as a freight-only railway. See also List of railway electrification systems Footnotes <laughs> <laughs>